Hi soon to be 6th graders! My name is Erin and I work for Rag Finery here in Bellingham. We are a local nonprofit that focuses on diverting old clothes from the garbage and I'm going to be showing you how to make this really cool moving up day hat today and it actually is made out of old t-shirts and a couple other materials I'll go over in a minute that would normally go to the garbage. So uh, by doing this really fun creative craft today we're actually going to be helping the environment by protecting our resources and not wasting things and trying to come up with creative ways to use things that would be called waste otherwise. Um, so without further ado I'm going to switch screen views and show you what you're going to need to make this graduation cap and uh, yeah I will see you at the end of the video. Here is another cap that I made with a different design. So there's this big flat part on top, there's a button that the tassel wraps around, and then this is the actual part that goes around your head, and it's attached to that black square. Let's go over the materials. First, we'll talk about the things that are not included in your kit, which are Elmer's glue, scissors, and a white colored pencil. Your teacher will have sewing thread, a sewing needle, and one black button available for each of you. Then your kit will come looking like this. So you'll take the rubber band off, there should be one big t-shirt piece, and then one smaller black t-shirt piece as well. You'll also get two green strips of stretchy fabric and scrap fabric pieces. And finally, you get your cardboard square, which will become the top of your cap. So our first step is to wrap the cardboard with the big black t-shirt piece. Now if your shirt has a design on it that you want to hide, just make sure that it's facing up just like mine is in this next step. Alright, so I've smoothed out my big t-shirt piece, I've set my cardboard square in the middle, and I'm going to grab my white color pencil and follow the lines of each edge so that I've got these square-like shapes at each corner. I'm going to go ahead and cut those out with my scissors, going right to the corners of the cardboard square. And once you have those four flaps, you will glue the cardboard square onto the fabric. Be careful not to use too much glue or else the cardboard will get soggy. And we'll just start by gluing down one flap at a time. And it's kind of like you're making a cardboard box. So we'll glue down one flap and then we'll do the other flap on the opposite end making sure that we're getting all of those edges glued down really nice. And once we have that opposite flap glued down, then we can switch to the other sides. And then I'm going to trim off any extra fabric that might be hanging over the edge. If there's any flaps that are kind of sticking up, you can add some glue and tack those back down. Our next step is to make the cap that will fit around your head and attach to the board. So we'll use the smaller piece of black fabric to make the cap part of our hat. So go ahead and fold it in half, and then you can use your colored pencil or crayon to draw a sort of a semicircle or a big arc onto your fabric. So we've just made the line that our stitching is going to follow, and if you've never sewn before, the first thing that you have to do is thread your needle. Now both your needle and your thread are pretty tiny, so I'm going to show you how to do this with a larger model. This is our very scientific cardboard needle model, and this part right here is called the eye of the needle, and this is what your thread travels through. So next I'm going to grab my massive <laughs> thread, yours will not be this big, don't worry, and uh, I'm going to pass one end of the thread through the eye of the needle, just like this. And I'm going to pull this end through until it matches with the other end of the thread. I'm going to switch views now to um, tie the knot at the end of our thread. Um, this is really important to keep your stitches from unraveling before you start sewing. We've got our needle, 
and I've got the two ends of the thread right here in my hands and I'm going to make a loop just like that. Let me make it bigger so it's more obvious. A huge loop just like this. So notice how these two ends are on top of this loop and you see lay them on top like that and then I'll reach through the loop and grab these two ends. And what you have kind of looks like a pretzel almost. Just like that. And then to finish, we pull it tight. I'm gonna do that again. You have your two ends, they're lined up. We make a big loop. Then reach through the loop. Notice that these two ends are on top. Reach through the loop and pull these two ends through. And you want that knot to be pulled pretty tight. One more time. Make a big loop with your two ends on top. Reach through the loop to grab those two ends so they're sticking out of the middle of the loop like this and then pull tight. Ta-da! And before you start sewing, you can trim these ends if you don't want them to get in the way. It makes it a little bit easier. So at the very end, you have your needle threaded, and then all the way down here, we've got our knot that keeps our stitches from unraveling. All right, now that we've got our needle threaded, we're gonna move on to actually sewing the cap part of your hat. So we've drawn this big arc, and we're going to start by inserting your needle at the bottom of one side of the arc. And it doesn't matter which side you pick, just whatever feels natural. And we're going to sew these two layers together using what's called a running stitch. So a running stitch is one of the simplest sewing stitches that you can do. And all that it is, is taking your needle tip and going down into fabric, coming up about a finger's width above, and then pulling the thread all the way through. And if you pull too tight, then your fabric is gonna get all wrinkled together. And if that happens, then you can just stretch the fabric back out and pull out some slack from your thread. So we're gonna pause real quick and show you some different views of the running stitch so that you can kind of imagine what it looks like if you were to cut the fabric in half. So this stitch goes up and down through the fabric. If you look at this diagram right here, you can see that our knot is on top and we start by going down into the fabric and then coming back up and then going down into the fabric again. We're going through both layers, coming up and going down. And there's a bit of space in between each place where our needle goes down or up through the fabric. And that's what ends up creating this line of stitches that looks like a dotted line or dashed line. So if we come back to our fabric cap, you can see that we are doing a curved dash line with our running stitches. So we're going to follow that arc that we drew and go all the way along that line until we reach the other end. So if we're looking at mine upside down, it's the left side for me. And once I wrap up my stitches here, I'm going to tie another knot. I'll try to tie it as close to the fabric as I possibly can. And then I'll cut the thread above the knot. And then the last thing is to take your scissors and trim the excess fabric away, but do not cut into the stitches. So try to keep a border around your stitches that's about as wide as your finger. And lastly, before moving on to the next step, we need to turn our cap inside out. And you can try it on and see how it fits. And then we're gonna attach it to the board. So we're going to attach the cap to the base of your board. So notice that the, um, the bottom of your board has the raw edges of where you folded the fabric over. And I'm going to, if you haven't already, turn your cap inside out, or right side out, excuse me, 
so that the stitches look like this on the inside and on the outside they look like that. So you're staring at your stitches in here and we kind of want to spread the edges of your cap away from the middle because we don't want to stitch into the sides of the cap or else it won't fit around your head. So I have my needle and thread and I'm going to go down through the cap material, come out the other side, and then pick up some fabric on the baseboard and then come back up through the cap to this side and keep making stitches all the way around so that it's securely attached to the board. And I'll do it real nice and slow. So first, down through the cap. I'm gonna pull my needle through. This part's pretty tricky, so just be very mindful of your sharp needle point and try your best not to poke yourself. I've got a tip later for um, folks who might be having trouble with that. All right, so now I'm gonna scoop up some fabric on the baseboard with my needle. And here's the tip. You can use a pencil to hold the fabric down so that your needle can more easily pass through the fabric. And you can lift up the needle tip with your pencil so that your other hand can grab it. It gets kind of tricky when it's just like so close to the board. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll demonstrate again. So now we're up through the baseboard fabric. We're going to come back up through the cap. Kind of close to where our other stitch was, but it's not super important. We just want it to really be stuck on there well. Okay, now back down. Down through the cap fabric. Down into the baseboard fabric. So notice how my, my other finger is doing what the pencil just did back there. I'm holding down the fabric so that the needle can more easily pass through the fabric. Since it's glued, it's really close to the cardboard. We need some help lifting it, um, lifting it from that surface. Okay, back up through the cap fabric. There's the needle tip. Right there. Down. Scoop. Pencil. I put pressure down on the end of the needle to lift the tip up. And if I'm having a hard time grabbing it, luckily I have super long fingernails, so it's pretty easy for me. But if you're having a hard time picking up that end of the needle, it's not, you can't quite grab it, you can use a pencil to just kind of weasel your way under there and grab it with your fingers. Okay, back up through the cap, down into back of the cap. And then I'm going to go down and then scoop and pull. I did try to figure out how to do this another way that didn't involve sewing because I thought this would be pretty tricky for y'all. Uh, I could not figure it out. If y'all figure out a better way to do this, please let me know. Um, I was really stumped, but y'all are very clever fifth graders, almost excuse me, almost sixth graders, I'm sure you'd be able to figure out something creative. Um, hot glue might, might work, but we'll try our best with this. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any ideas for how to do this differently. Okay, so down into the base fabric and we're putting pressure on the back of the needle to lift the tip back, back up out of the base fabric using a pencil to help it pop up so that my other hand can grab it. Okay, we're almost to the end of my little weird, I guess it's kind of a circle. Um, yeah, I'm gonna call that good, that's my last stitch. So I'm going to tie a knot close to the fabric. So I made my, I made my knot, the pretzel thing we worked on earlier, and then I hold my finger down to keep the knot as close to the base of the fabric as possible. And I pull it tight. 
So that knot is real nice and close down there at the bottom. If your knot was up here, say, then all of these stitches would get a lot looser. They would pull away from the base fabric. Okay, so I've trimmed that end and now it's attached. Yay! So this won't be as noticeable because y'all will be using thinner, um, thinner thread than me. This is just to help you see what's going on here. And so now it's all ready to go and we can move on to attaching the button. So we'll flip our board back over and grab our button and we're going to grab a white colored pencil or your white crayon. Take your white colored pencil and make an X in the middle of the board. This is where your button's gonna go. So we'll thread our needle, and you don't need a whole lot of thread for this part, because we won't be doing a ton of sewing. And as always, tie a knot at the end of your doubled up thread. And then you'll insert your needle tip into the middle of that X and pull all the way through until that knot is flush with the fabric. Now, the back of your button is going to have a loop, just like this, or a hole. Your needle is going to pass through that hole, and then you pull it through the other side. So now your button is hanging off the thread, and your needle tip goes back into the fabric. So your button is captured on this loop of thread. So here's what that loop might look like from the side. And to make this extra strong, we're going to go back through that loop or hole on your button again. Pull through. And then insert our needle tip into the fabric once more. So we're scooping up some fabric, pulling our thread through. And then going through the hole on the bottom of the button. The last thing we're going to do is tie a knot at the base of the button. So the button is kind of in the way and it's a little bit hard to see, but this is just the same knot that we used at the end of the running stitch and when we attached the cap to the board. As always, go ahead and trim the tail from that knot. Okay, so it's time to make the t-shirt tassel that'll hang off the top of your cap. In your kit, you'll have two strips of green t-shirt or stretchy fabric, and we're just gonna cut them into really thin, narrow strips, and you can mix and match and create strips from both colors. At the end, I used about eight strips, and as you cut, you can try lining up all of your strips and then folding them in half, and use that to imagine how thick your tassel is gonna be at the end. So here I am folding them in half and I took some out to get eight strips and then line them all together and continue to the next step. Now grab one of your extra strips and we're going to tie it in the middle of our group of tassel pieces. And then fold them in half. And grab another extra strip And we're going to tie that around the bundle, a little bit down from the top. And then we're going to wrap it around the entire bundle of strips and tie another knot. And lastly, we're just going to put a daub of glue on that knot at the base of that wrapped section. And there you go, you're all done. Now we get to move on to the fun part, which is decorating. So you have a bundle of brightly colored felt and fleece fabric. And we're just going to treat it like construction paper. So you can cut out whatever kinds of shapes you want and even letters and glue it onto the base of your hat with Elmer's glue.
as you decorate your cap, think about what was really special about your time in elementary school. Were there certain subjects that you really liked, that you learned about? Maybe you have a favorite unit that you covered in class? Did you pick up a new skill or a hobby? Maybe there's a new sport or game that you started to play? Your hat can be a representation of all of those things, or you can just make whatever you want, because it's art. We've got one more finishing touch to do and that's to attach the tassel. Loop the end of your tassel around the button and tie a knot around the base of the button by passing the end through that loop you just created. You can tie another knot just to make sure it's really secure. And if you'd like you can cut off any extra that might be hanging off. That's it! It's all done and ready to wear. So give yourselves a big round of applause, especially if this was your first time doing anything sewing related. Well, thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. I hope you had a good time making and decorating your hats. And congratulations on making it to the end of fifth grade. That is such an accomplishment. This year in particular, it's been super tough. And I can't imagine what y'all have gone through. So. Even though I don't know you, I'm proud of you for sticking it out to the end and wish you all the best in middle school. And I hope that you got some creative ideas on how to reuse textile waste today by working with uh, old clothes and scrap fabric and other waste materials that might otherwise go to the landfill. So um, yeah, please share, uh, share your projects with us. We'd love to see photos of your graduation caps. Um, but if not, just have a great moving up day and we wish you all the best from here at Refinery. Bye.